Hello everybody, what is going on and welcome back to our My Player Career Mode. Firstly, thank you for tuning in. Hopefully you're all doing fantastic. Um, apologies for the delay between episodes. I've just been super busy with uh, real life stuff, so I've not actually had the chance to play much FIFA. Uh, but yeah, thanks for sticking with me and we are back today for a brand new episode. And it might be a good starting point to kind of run through what had happened in the last episode. So defeat to Leicester and Manchester United and a 1-1 draw against our former club Norwich meant we did not manage to win a single match in uh, in the league in the last episode. So, or at least live, that is. Um, so yeah, uh, as things stood, we weren't in great form. We followed that with a Watford match, which I decided to play as post-commentary. I'm not going to show you uh, the match itself because to be honest, we lacked a lot of confidence and yeah, it wasn't a good performance. But then we followed that with a much needed confidence booster against Nice in a 3-1 group stage game. So I'll show you those goals now. And with those results then, as you know, it means we now trail Liverpool by five points after 16 league matches have been played. Manchester United currently third, with Leicester just behind them in fourth place. And uh, all in all, goal difference-wise, we're looking very, very good. But it's just that point gap that we need to try and claw back today, starting with Everton at Stamford Bridge. So Everton right now... Um, unless, of course, they're in the top six. We won't be activating competitor mode for this. So we'll skip ahead and we'll check out the two lineups and then get straight into our first of the hopefully three or four matches we have for you today. So, yeah, sit back, relax, and hopefully enjoy. Everton's 16th coming into this. So you'd like to think that we will manage the victory here at Stamford Bridge. There's the two lineups. But just quickly as well, I want to make sure the competitor mode is, uh, is actually off here. And as you see, there it is. It is off. Ultimate difficulty, of course. But the last league match we played, that Watford game, we just didn't really look like scoring. So we need to try and get some confidence going. And hopefully that 3-1 win against Nice might just help us do that. Although even in that game, to be honest, aside from the set pieces that we created the goals from, we didn't look that great in open play. So we'll see. So it's Carlos Ancelotti and Everton to start our live action for today. And we want to be starting with a win if possible as Keane can play us through. And already we're in behind for Chelsea's first. And what a dream start we've got here at Stamford Bridge then. Four minutes in, we strike to give our side the lead. Get in. That is the best possible start I could have hoped for. Especially, you know, we were so kind of slow against Watford. It felt like we just didn't really look like playing out of kind of second gear, if you will. But that's the best start that we possibly could have managed. Here is Nabri into the feet of Bakayoko. Chelsea look hungry to go and find a second here as Digne is supporting us on the left-hand side. Here is Luca Digne. We're still here as well. And he plays that ball back to us. Everton allowing us a run into the penalty area. Digne carries and still continues his run forward. And it's 2-0 as, as many minutes really for Chelsea. There's been, what, five or so minutes between two goals here. And Everton are stunned. And really... They should have dealt with this. It's not that great from Chelsea, honestly. It's a simple attack down the left-hand side. Eventually playing a 1-2 with Digne, who carries his run forward. And then with the right foot, in at the near post, doubles Chelsea's advantage. Everton in real trouble here. I'm very glad as well that you are getting to see us playing well in one of the live matches. I feared when I played the Watford you know, fixture that we actually wouldn't be very good here. Keane's just made it 3-0. What's going on? We're 20 minutes in. It's 3-0 Chelsea. Well, 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 Everton. We actually might be able to get quite the resounding win here. That on top of the goal difference we already had in front of Liverpool would be a real help as well. Because the way things are going, we might need goal difference come the end of the season. Fantastic finish from Moyes Keane. Chelsea not done there, I hope, though. 
Finally, a show of life from Everton, who have the ball in an advanced area. Lose it straight away, and now Nabry finds Bakayoko. Chelsea looking to go forward again with Moise Keane. Now Havertz. Havertz with the ball over to this left-hand side. And we're looking towards the middle. Keane waits, and we've got Havertz there as well. There's the pullback for Kai Havertz! It's four! What a finish as well from Kai Havertz! He got two in the Europa League tie against Nice. Both of them headers from corners. This, though, is a thunderous left-footed finish. Absolutely no chance for Everton's goalkeeper. I'm pretty certain we've had four shots, four goals here. Stamford Bridge is bouncing. And it's the fluidity of the attack from Chelsea. Everton cannot set themselves. That is an incredible finish as well. Here is a Drissy for Everton, finding the feet of Allen. Now Firpo off to Vinyas. He's got the run through the middle and he finds the feet of Loser, who's deflected shot, falls the way of Matt Vienko. And he will pull a goal back for Everton. It is 4-1 now. Top finish, but really it's the, well, the only time Everton have really been inside our penalty area. And there's a large slice of fortune in this as well as the deflected shot falls the way of Matt Vienko. And like I say, well taken from him for all the action in the first half. It's been quite the quiet second, really, other than that one shot you saw me put wide. There's not been too much going on. Kante through the middle. And Muntianu will gladly accept that pass and put Chelsea 5-1 in front. And usually when you start talking about a quiet half or there's been not a lot going on, something happens and thankfully it's the goal. But it's the work of Kante. You can see no Aston Villa player, sorry, Everton player closing him down. He just has all the time in the world to pick out the pass to the substitute uh, Muntianu who finishes it off into the bottom corner. 30 seconds left then here at Stamford Bridge and talk about putting on a show. Chelsea 5, Everton won the final score here. And now we can look to build on this momentum, take it into our next match and hopefully many more goals to come. And when you look at the rest of our fixtures for today, you got to say uh, we'll be disappointed if we don't win two out of the three. Palace up next away at Selhurst Park, then Forest at home for West Ham United away. I'm not sure how West Ham are getting on. Um, but I do know that uh, we have just got our Europa League knockout round first leg opponents. Our first knockout round first leg, I should say. So we'll take a look at that then and see who we will face. Um, I'm hoping it'll be quite an easy draw. We've got Anderlecht. So where do they finish? Well, they had to have finished second in their group for us to have got them. And they finished behind Roma. So yeah, only just managing to get past Rosenborg. So I think that's a pretty favourable uh, draw for us. So, yeah, happy with that. Craiova have got Napoli as well. So that's a really tough game for them. Arsenal play Fiorentina. Any other interesting ties in there? Shakhtar Celtic could be a good one to watch. Spurs Ajax as well, actually, is a very, very good one to look at. But off to Selhurst Park we go then. Palace down in 12th. And like I said, looking for at least two wins from three, if not three from three. And Ketia starts up front for Palace. The Haya in goal. What? David Hay is in net for Palace. I mean, he must be like into his 30s, probably late 30s by now, though. Um, so I don't imagine he's the same De Gea that you're used to seeing of Manchester United. But still, interesting to see him still in the Premier League. If the first match of today is anything to go by, David De Gea is in for a busy afternoon here at Selhurst Park as Chelsea breaking through. Keane off to Havertz. Havertz should really have scored. And it's a fine stop with the left leg from Crystal Palace's number one. And I may be thinking, should Moyes Keane have gone himself? He selflessly laid it to, to Kai Havertz, who tries to convert. And as we know, De Gea saves. There's the delivery from the corner. Roman Yoli heads it back post. Keane can't quite keep it in play. But that's an early warning sign for the home side. You can't imagine that Palace will get away with that too many times today. As we know, Havertz should have scored. Here is Keane again. Started this game off brilliantly, hasn't he? And now we've got Digne over on the left-hand side and we're still in space here. Luca Digne can play it to us. Havertz on marked in the middle. This time we'll find the back of the net. Chelsea have the first goal and we've only played 13 minutes here. But Palace just have not been able to defend. And they're going to have to sort this out very quickly. Otherwise, we're looking at a very similar scoreline to that that we got in match number one of today. It's such a simple finish for Kai Havertz, though. Yeah, it's just not picked up by anybody in a Palace shirt. So much time. And actually, the finish is quite unorthodox, but he makes it work. 
Well, the start we made to this match, I was thinking that we'd have a field day here, but as Havertz's pass is cut out by Yedvai, Palace have grown in to this first half as time has gone on. And actually, you could say I've had the better of things in the last 10, 15 minutes. I mean, goal updates elsewhere as well. Uh, there's not too many to tell you about which really affects us. That's a brilliant flick on from Enketia. It's lovely play and Palace have their equaliser. Forget about goal updates elsewhere because they've created and crafted a beautiful move which has resulted in the drawing level. And it's the first real sign of life we've seen from them in the attacking sense all game. I said they was growing into the half. 10-15 minutes of possession football and that's what they've got as a reward. I'm actually a little bit shocked that they've been able to create something so brilliant. I don't know why I'm shocked, because they're not a bad side, Palace, by any means. Sitting mid-table at the moment. And Roy Hodgson, you can see him there, loves what he's just seen from his side. And before half-time, Isaiah Brown has got the reward for what we can only put as a move that was so well-crafted. If we'd have put that together, that move, you'd be applauding us. Fair play to Palace. I guess now might be a good time to tell you about those goal updates that I was going to let you know about before Palace's equaliser. And uh, as you saw, Man United now 3-0 up in their match. Uh, Arsenal behind to Manchester City, I believe. But elsewhere, the one that does actually matter to us as we're looking to break down this left-hand side. Liverpool being held by Southampton. 1-1 the scoreline there. Can we get a chance to go back in front here? There's the cross towards the back post. Serge Nabry was the player looking for it as we get a second chance at it, this time towards Keane. And Havertz will send it through to Kante, and he has found the back of the net. Chelsea skipper pops up with a captain's goal. Chelsea 2, Crystal Palace 1. And we are looking to take advantage of any potential Liverpool slip-up if Southampton can hold on to any result there. And it is at St Mary's as well, so with home advantage, they might just be able to do it. Kante, when you need him most, captain's goal puts Chelsea back in front here. But I don't think that's where the goals will end. Here is Havertz. We've continued our run down the left. And now he looks to play that ball. There's a goal again in the Man City-Arsenal match. Arsenal did actually draw level, but now they're behind again. Havertz, a quick one too, will allow us to get in down the left. But I can't get a shot away, so we'll look to pull it back to the middle. Keen shot blocked. Ferguson heads it away. Yedvai hooks it away. And the pressure, though, still on Palace as Jimenez finds Bakayoko, who sends it towards, and we look to put one in the top corner. But that is a tremendous piece of goalkeeping from David De Gea, who still has got it. That is unreal. I'm not sure I could have hit that much sweeter. Morata down the line to Ferguson, onside as well. Ferguson looking for a cross. There's the ball back into the middle. The ball breaks kindly for Bracalo. And it is an equalising goal. And whilst I said I didn't think the goals were done there, I didn't want a Palace equaliser. I meant for us to get another. I had to speak too soon, didn't I, in, in regards to two wins from three. Oh, so frustrating because, yeah, it's just when the shot comes in, the ball ricochets. And honestly, if it bounces anywhere else, they don't find the net. But it falls straight to the feet of Bracalo. I'm not sure we've got time again to go up the other end and try and find another goal. And you look back at that David De Gea save. You know the one that, that I had the shot where he's going in the top corner. That was unreal, right? And then that happens. Jimenez is off. Chelsea going on the attack. Oh, it's a heavy touch. It's poor. It's just tired legs. And 30 seconds to go. I have reminiscence of the Norwich 1-1 draw that we got in the last episode. It feels similar here at Selhurst Park. It's finished Palace 2, Chelsea 2. And we can't take advantage. And now our only hope is that Southampton held on to a draw against Liverpool, which we will see if that's the case. Palace had two shots on target. Of course they did. And as you see, oh, Liverpool, man. They found a goal to go in front against Southampton, winning that 2-1. So that uh, makes our draw here even more annoying. Seven points now the gap. United's win and Leicester as well means they actually have three points behind us. You know what? I know that seven points is a big gap, but there's still there's still so many matches to be played. I'm assuming Liverpool will still have to play the teams around. And Southampton, to be fair, are into fifth, so they're having a good season. So it would not have been unheard of for them to have got the result. And we are currently in and around team of the season. I'm trying to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, I'm pretty certain it's, it's done in January, though. That was just the shortlist that you saw there. 
So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with that. Still yet to find a player of the year in the series. Maybe this will be the year. Hopefully, anyway. I guess we'll just go straight into our next one then, which is Forrest from Stamford Bridge. There's the lineups. They're in 18th. Gotta win. We simply have to win. And, to be fair, win comfortably. So, let's see. Vignet onside. And now he's in the box. There's the ball in. Keane's header! And it's in the bomb corner. I don't know how he's turned that into a golden opportunity. But Moyes Keane strikes early doors here at Stamford Bridge with a brilliant header. I mean, the keeper's made a bit of a meal of it, right? But I think he's possibly expecting uh, Keane's header to go wide. Does it clip the post as the ball goes in? I think it does. Yeah, there you go. It does clip off the post. Fantastic header from Moyes Keane. Chelsea lead 1-0. I'm not going to say anything about us, you know, dominating this match until we're two, three and a lot and comfortably cruising because I don't want to jinx things. Serge Nabry across the face of goal should score from the first attempt. Luckily, the ball has bounced straight back and we do slot it home on the second. Can't really go too crazy about that because we sh we've got to score there. I mean, Serge Nabry's laid that on a plate for us. I'm quite surprised, actually. I didn't score the first attempt. There you go. I mean, I guess... Ruben Blanco is in a great position, but even so, to hit it straight at him, that's pretty poor from me. Wave after wave of blue attack here from Chelsea. Nabry Havertz. Well, now I'm going to say it. Chelsea 3, Forest 0. Points are in the bag. And the famous line that cost us last time against Palace. This might resemble a scoreline similar to that of match one up against Everton. When I said that, we drew 2-2. This time, I'm very confident there's no way back here for Forrest. Lovely move again. Havertz slots home. Every time Forrest clear the ball, it just comes straight back at them. Here is Digne in down the left-hand side. Across the face of goal to Keane. And he will convert for Chelsea's fourth. And I tell you, he's deserved that. Moise Keane is so instrumental to Chelsea. I don't know why he's, he's getting substituted for Piontek. Or Montianu because he just holds up the play and gets other players around him involved so much better than the other two do. Rodriguez in space here. Forrest going forward. Near post cross. And there's Cavallo. And Forrest will get a goal. Mendy will be livid. He's had nothing to do all game and he's lost the clean sheet because Chelsea fall asleep. I mean, yeah. Clean sheet, obviously... Doesn't really affect me being an attacking player, but it would still be nice. And when they're not actually having any chances apart from this, Palace had two shots on target, scored two. Nottingham Forest, I believe, have just scored from their first on target. Mendy is beating at his near post, though, so I'm not sure he can have many complaints. But that's Forest's first shot, and it's gone in. And unfortunately, as well, the first substitution of the match for Chelsea is Moise Keane. So he's off, and Muntiano is on. So there'll be no hat trick for our number 15. As we look to go and get Chelsea a fifth just to add to the scoreline. I mean, we may as well just go forward, right? Because we can't get the clean sheet anymore. So let's just throw bodies in the attack and see if we can grab a couple more goals. There's the ball back across the face of goal. Montianu looking to back heel it through. And uh, Bakayoko was the player awaiting his pass. But it didn't quite work out as Montianu intended. Great turn from Havertz. We'll play it into the middle. Havertz carries forward. And still, Chelsea on the attack. Are we onside? I'm not quite sure we are. And we take it as well. It is the fifth goal that we were looking for. And the offside flag, well, it never came. I want to see how close it actually is. I'm not sure we'll get a, a good look from this angle. You can see, I mean, nobody really in a Forest shirt even appeals, though. Full time here at Stamford Bridge. It finishes Chelsea 5, Forest 1. It's a result that you probably expect. And now we have to see if Aston Villa were able to do us a favour by getting anything from Liverpool. They are facing Liverpool at home, so fingers crossed. I love how it says that we scored the winner or bagged the winner against Forest. We won by five goals to one. That makes out like we'd just about ended up with the win. But uh, yeah, apparently we bagged the winner against Forest, not like there was four other goals. And uh, to let you know as well, I got it wrong. Um, Aston Villa weren't at home, but I think they did manage to pull off a result for us. As you see, the gap to Liverpool back now down to just four points, which makes me think they won. They did. So Villa went to Anfield and beat Liverpool by two goals to one. That's a massive result for us. All right, we can really get the momentum going then as we face West Ham United. Liverpool at home to Stoke. 
You'd expect them to win that comfortably. Stoke down in the relegation zone. In fact, dead bottom. One win after 19 matches. West Ham for us, though. Uh, where are West Ham? They're probably down there as well. Yeah, 17th. So, should win this as well comfortably like we did against Forest. It's time for our last match of today. And we've been given away back into a potential first place. We could claw the gap down to just a single point if results elsewhere go in our favour and we win here at the London Stadium. But there's some interesting names in that West Ham side. Thiago Almada in behind Rafa Liao is not a bad striking partnership whatsoever. It's a very different David Moyes and West Ham to the one that we see in real life. Of course, they're sat on the verge of potential Champions League football. However, in our series... They're sat on the verge of relegation. So it's going to take something almighty for them to get the result, it feels like, here today. And they do get us underway and start pretty strongly. Varmada with the ball over to this left hand, or right hand side, I should say. Toliso, good control shown by him. And I believe that is a Chelsea throw as we force it off of Toliso. Nabri finding Atal. Brilliant ball across. How about that for an opening goal from Chelsea? Yusuf Attal with a fired ball back across the face of goal. And then at that point, I kind of just hoped that we got the shot right. That was hit with almighty pace. Great work initially from Serge Nabry. Sends the ball to Attal, who rifles that back across. And on the first time volley, we show great technique to send it back across the goalkeeper into the far corner. Chelsea won the up here against West Ham. And that was not an easy finish at all. West Ham free kick. Thiago Almada stood over this. In fact, it'll be Luke Bacchio with the effort. Which goes narrowly just over the crossbar. And if you look at the angle here, the ball and the free kick had Kepa flying over to that side. I think he's got it covered, but it was not far away from Luke Bacchio for a West Ham equaliser, who since the goal have gone in, that seems to have spurred them on. They seem to uh, look like a bit of a different side after we scored. They've actually been able to create a couple of chances down the uh, wings and try and get in behind for crosses, which we've dealt with with relative ease. Here is Havertz. Now looking to turn and get Chelsea back on the front foot. And he does find a great ball into our feet. We need Keane to make this move through the middle. There's the pass through. Moise Keane's in for 2-0. He's not going to miss that. And Ch he does double Chelsea's advantage. And for all of the work that West Ham have been doing to try and get themselves back in this match, well, it's got even harder here. Just a simple, simple goal in the end for Chelsea. Ball through the heart of the defence, into the feet of Keane, who, as a top player, is never going to miss that. Just sends it into the bottom corner. Kante finding Digne. There's the ball in. Nabry attacks it. Havertz, I don't know how he's done that. And the ball... How has he got that volley in the back of the net? Seriously. He just watches the ball drop onto his left foot and it's a rocket from Kai Havertz. And Villa seem to be keeping up with the giant slaying, I guess you could say. Um, I, I, well, can you call it a giant killing? Because at this point, they've beaten Liverpool and they've just taken the lead against Manchester United. 2-1 the score there as well. In fact, yeah, that's how he's done it. Quality. Um, yeah, 2-1. So we've seen that they have the capability to hold on to a lead. They did it against Liverpool and they look like they might do it against, uh, against Man United. Well, any hopes we had of a Stoke win have just been squandered because I've now seen that Liverpool are 5-1 up. So I think they're probably going to win that. Um, yeah, so it'll keep the gap at the top the exact same as it was when we came into this, uh, this match here. Rafael Liao's ball forward cut out and there might be a chance for Chelsea to grab a fourth. You never know. Montianu... Is there to support and Havertz, well, doesn't really control the ball. Jimenez had a fine episode, by the way. He's been solid at the back four as apart from the Palace game. Chelsea free kick and with seconds left, it looks like it's our first clean sheet of the live matches today. Of course, we got one against Watford in that nil-nil draw that you probably haven't seen because it was, well, nil-nil, so there wasn't much to show you. But anyways, that's a good win for us. Let's take a look at the table. We already know that Liverpool have comfortably beaten Stoke. So we know that no matter what, we're still four points behind them. But we started five, so I'll take that. And so here it is then. 18 matches left. Four points behind Liverpool now. Leicester up into third. Aston Villa did hold on to their 2-1 win against Manchester United, which means they're further behind us now. They are eight points adrift of us. Spurs up into fifth. Southampton into sixth. City, well, they seem to be struggling on their title defence. 
down in seventh place. Villa up into a very impressive ninth. Brighton as well impressive so far. Arsenal down in 11th. Norwich in 13th. So Norwich looking like at the moment they might well stay in the Premier League. They are six points off of uh, relegation zone. So six points in safe. Everton down in 16th still. West Ham 17th. And you can see the bottom three. So we played effectively. Everton, West Ham, Stoke. Oh, sorry. Nottingham Forest today. So we played three of the teams in the bottom five. So, yeah, I mean, aside from the Palace result, it's been a really, really good episode for us. We've got Anderlecht in the Europa League. When do we play the first leg of that? I think it's February, I want to say. Um, yeah, February. So it's in between Norwich and Manchester United and Watford. So that's quite nice for us, to be fair. And I want to take a look as well and see where we stand in the top goal scoring charts. We're top. 14 and 20. And we're also top in the assists. That's 29 goal contributions in 20 matches. Happy days. For now, though, my friends, that's going to be where we end today's episode. If you have enjoyed it, a like would be greatly appreciated. As I said earlier, thanks for the patience that you lot have shown me um, with the break between videos. And thank you, as always, for your support. If you are new around here and like what you see, hit that subscribe button down below. Until next time, have a great day. Have a great evening. I'll leave you with that. We are shortlisted, potentially, for the UEFA Team of the Year 2025. Until next time, much love, peeps. Stay safe. Adios.